Most people agree that evil exists in this world. For some it's war, famine, or violence. For some it's a spiritual darkness. And for others, evil is a very real presence, a physical entity of terrifying power. Tonight, Sightings investigates what many people believe is an epidemic of organized evil operating underground. What is evil? Is it merely a dictionary definition, morally wrong or bad? Or is it something more, a deeper, darker force that makes people perform cruel and inhuman acts? Does an evil force really exist that can attract and then control the actions of human beings? Or is evil nothing more than a convenient excuse for deviant and destructive behavior? These are questions without easy answers and are continually debated by those who study the human mind and the human spirit. Everywhere in the world we've seen cruelty and uh, things that are vicious and things that are anti-human and that, that somehow that that's that's the, the kind of the opposite of, uh, of the affirmation of life. The great mass of human misery is caused not by some evil force, but by the stupid beliefs and actions that we engage in. A human being has power in this world to do what he or she wants. And if what you want to do is evil, you can do terrible things. We have to decide to be good or evil. No one else makes that decision. We're exposed to evil every day. Robbery, kidnapping, even murder have become tragically commonplace on the evening news. We've become anesthetized to the evil around us and have even embraced it in mass media. Friday the 13th is one of the most successful movie series in history. The evil Freddy Krueger has even become a folk hero. But then there is evil that will never be trivialized in media. Hitler, architect of Nazism and the mastermind of the Holocaust. Stalin, butcher of 40 million. Cult leader Jim Jones, who led 900 into mass suicide. Jeffrey Dahmer and Charles Manson. What drives people like these to the depths of evil? Many believe that they are vehicles for the devil. Today, Satan is free to go and do within limits, whatever he pleases. I did not kill my girlfriend. My master, Satan, did. Satan, Lucifer, Beelzebub. Whatever this force is called, it's been the inspiration for madmen whose victims pay the ultimate price. At Harris County Jail in Houston, Texas, sightings investigated the claims of one murderer who maintains that the devil made him do it, the supreme evil spirit he calls Satan. I didn't choose to kill my girlfriend. It was done by the influence of the demon. I believe that Satan wanted her to die. April 20th, 1991, while Angela Singer, a known prostitute, was out working, David Trevillo, nicknamed Damien, was in this motel room conjuring up what he believed to be the devil. I started uttering an incantation to Lucifuge Rofakel. I felt him enter me. I went into the spirit world and brought it back out with me. I started speaking in tongues I didn't understand. When my girlfriend came back, she got cold chills as soon as she walked in the door. David Trevillo stabbed Angela Singer 39 times and insists that demonic supernatural forces were at work. But is that a defense anyone is willing to accept? Clinical psychologist Ralph Underwager believes there is nothing paranormal about Trevillo's heinous acts. No, I would never deny that Satan exists. What I would deny most vehemently is that he has any power whatsoever to control or to direct or to possess human beings. Don't blame me. The devil made me do it. And that is pure, plain, unadulterated balderdash. Yet law enforcement agencies nationwide, from the largest metropolitan areas to the smallest precincts, report that they are encountering what may be an epidemic of evil. For many of them, the concept of Satan is very real. It's like you or I would believe in God, they believe in, the, in Satan. And some officers don't believe it. Uh, it's just ghost stories to them. I myself, I've personally seen cases. It's not only a local problem for a small department such as mine, it's a national problem. David Trovillo may not be the boy next door, but is he the servant of a greater evil he calls Satan? 
Whatever the cause for his actions, he is now a convicted murderer, sentenced to 40 years to life. It's not the fault of illness, it's not the fault of Satan, it's the fault of the human heart. As horrible as Trovillo's crimes may be, there are people who believe there is another, even more sinister kind of evil. Groups of people who gather for the purpose of performing brutal, sadistic rituals in the name of the devil. Despite the testimonies of victims, many people still don't believe devil worship takes place. Instead of listening to the victims, they want proof of satanic sightings. What's your situation? Um, my father was high priest of a cult. My arms were tied above my head, and I was hung from a pole and swung out over a pit, and in the pit were bones and snakes. I was punished with a knife. What do you mean punished with a knife? I had to cut my own hand as a punishment. I have a scar on it. Syndicated radio talk show host Bob Larson is heard daily on over 250 stations. He reaches out to survivors who believe that they've been the victims of violent satanic rituals. Rituals that are so brutal and bizarre, they border on unbelievability. Let me tell you, I have been there and worked with, for hours and hours, with hundreds of victims who have been through this. They're not all liars. They're not all making it up. They're not all crazy. They're not all psychotic. Something's going on here. Husband and wife counseling team, Dr. Walter and Linda Young, are the leading pioneers in treating victims of ritual abuse. Linda and I work in this field together, and obviously we have to deal with what it's like day in and day out to work with people who've been traumatized to this extent. And I would have to say that when we're talking about issues of ritual abuse, where patients are talking about murder, or they're talking about a sacrifice or their own rapes and things of this sort, uh, it really takes its toll because of the sense of the unbelievability of how they survived it. I've heard of babies being killed, people delivering babies um, prematurely, or um, full-term babies that have been sacrificed, and um, satanic rituals where people are married to Satan and impregnated by someone or a group of people. Um, Again, no one wants to hear that. It's, it's too horrific for the population. Barbara Jackson is a scientist with a PhD in biochemistry and a former instructor at Harvard Medical School. She claims to be a survivor of satanic ritual abuse. For Barbara, memories of childhood torture didn't surface until she was an adult. Her stories of abuse follow a pattern exactly like those of other survivors Barbara has never met. Coming forward has taken immense personal courage. On a night when there was going to be a ritual, what would happen? People would start arriving, and they would have robes. And I would just be brought into the basement, and the basement is divided into two halves. One half is open. That's often where the table that the child or the animal would be put on to be hurt. I remember one time being put on this table that they were using, and they would hurt me with a metal crucifix. What is evil for you? Evil feels to me like a force. Barbara, many people who might be very s sympathetic with you would simply not believe you. How could anything this horrendous occur? We already know that things this horrendous have occurred routinely throughout the world. Claims of being raped by crucifixes or being crucified oneself are hogwash. Uh, the best bet for any reasonable person is to see this as a perfervid uh, fantasy of a twisted imagination. As you might imagine, many of the people I interviewed were extremely reluctant to come forward. And those victims remain afraid of retaliation by their abusers and ridicule by a skeptical public. But despite their fears, they have spoken out in the hope that they may help others avoid the same fate. As we hear these horrifying stories of ritualistic abuse, it's impossible not to wonder how such inhuman behavior could go undetected. The stories that survivors tell are so horrible, they seem almost unbelievable. And in fact, there are experts who question whether the evil of satanic cults is fact or fantasy. In truth, real physical evidence is lacking. But how or why would anyone invent such disturbing stories? The current furor over satanic cults is foolish for a very simple reason. There is no corroborating evidence of any sort that has ever been found. 
Connie Valentine is a survivor who holds a master's degree in rehabilitative counseling. She works with other survivors who remember the same types of ritual abuse Connie believes she herself has endured. Why are you telling this story? It needs to be stopped. Somebody needs to say it. I figure the worst they can do is kill me. They've certainly tortured me an awful lot, and dying doesn't frighten me anymore. Did you ever kill? Yes, I had to kill a number of people when I was young. How did you do that? I had to put knives in their stomach. Many times they would put their hand around my hand, and they would put the knife in and let me know that this was my fault. Was someone or something always killed? Almost always. What is evil to you? I always used to think that Satan was a figment of somebody's imagination. The more survivors I talked to, the more people are reporting they witnessed that entity in their memory. An evil entity, an evil force. Survivors believe they've experienced that force firsthand. But while there is a frightening similarity to stories from people who have never met, an argument can be made for the persuasive power of suggestion. Is satanic ritual abuse real? Or is it false memory produced by therapists? To have recovered repressed memories, to have flashbacks to events that they never knew about before and had no memories of before, that I say yes, indubitably, is a false memory and that those events never occurred. I think we're training more and more therapists to know how to treat these people. And I think more and more people really are willing to take that challenge to go back in time and feel the pain. Do, do you feel your life was ruined by this? No, I feel my life path was permanently altered. But it's possible to live through it, transcend it, live with the after effects, and interact very richly with life to reconnect with people, with spirituality, with all the things that have meaning because they can't take that away.